We'll take over from where we left in the previous video. We'll try to send the request now to the actual Redis queue. So Redis channel is where your message is actually going to be put into the queue. So let's create a let's create a message and then let's send message to queue. The service actuator here. Input channel is going to be Redis channel and I'm going to accept a message. And let's create a to send a message to the queue. We need an uh, adapter which is called as Redis queue message outbound channel adapter. And create a Redis queue message Oops. outbound channel adapter. And if you could see here, right, it's going to accept a queue name and the Redis connection factory. So the queue name, I'll hard code it here. We're going to use Redis queue. And for the connection factory, so auto auto wire. Check this connection factory here. Okay. Then set adapter dot. We'll have to handle message. So now we are going to pass in the message that we get here. And I think we don't need this because it's going to pass the message here and we are not going to return anything. So now what happens is like the message comes into your input channel through your uh, interface and it comes to this method which has the service actuator that's going to receive the input channel. It's going to print out receipt from service and then it's going to send it to the Redis channel. The Redis channel is where you're actually going to put your message into the Redis queue and then leave it. So after you put the message in the Redis queue, we'll have to receive it, right? We'll have to take it out from the queue or we have to uh, get it from the queue. So for that, we have to create another service actuator. Say from Q and let's give the input channel. So, what would be the input channel? We actually configure the input channel here. So, once you put it, put the you know request into the into this Redis queue. Uh, the output channel would be receiver channel that is once it goes into the queue when it comes out it goes to the output channel receiver channel so this is what we have to put in the uh, you know, the input channel of this particular method it's going to come here and now let us straight away print it out received from that is queue We are not going to return anything. Let's keep it as wide. So, so the example is done. Uh, it's, it's a very straightforward and a simple example. Let's try to run this, and I'll also open up the uh, Redis CLI so that you can see how the actual uh, system works. So let me start up the server. Okay, the server is up. All right. So you could see here, right? The system has already started to establish a connection with Redis and Redis is not available. So let's start.
the Redis server now. Okay, Redis has been started. Now let's go and monitor the Redis CLI. All right, so you could see here our Redis queue is already, you know, occupied by the Redis and it is constantly pinging to see if any message is coming or not. So now our initial setup is done. Let's go and fire a request from the postman. All right, the status is 200. Let's take a look at our console. Uh, we should be getting all the messages there. Let's take a look at our Redis queue. Uh, the Redis queue doesn't have any information. Something is wrong with our application. Let's take a look at our console. The console is empty, which means all these things didn't work. Okay, uh, the thing is, we created this interface, right? But never, we didn't auto wire it to the controller. We are not sending anything here. So I'm sorry about that. Let me auto wire this here. stop the server and let me restart it okay the servers are up and running let's try to send the message again message has been sent and you could see here where our redis queue as a help push event on it and our message has been posted to the queue let's quickly go and take a look at our console and you could see here from our console received from service which is our first service actuator where our input channel is mapped so we got the received message from the service and now we send it to the redis channel it went to the channel it went to the redis queue and then it came out of the queue to this particular receiver channel and then we posted that message in the console so what are the different use cases for using this redis queue with spring integration components well you can make use of this to talk to other microservices in your architecture. You can use this to send requests to some legacy systems, or even you can make this a complete asynchronous you know, application. Uh, for example, let's say I'll go to the messaging gateway. Let me do a oops, future. So it returns a future object or else you can go to a configuration you implement async implement the async configurer uh, to to make it completely asynchronous so these are the different use cases where you can make use of this and uh, let's say if you are working in uh, spring cloud environment right uh, then you can make use of Spring Cloud Streams, which combines Spring integration and queues and even simplifies the process a lot. So all these configurations that you make, right, uh, can be even simplified if you use Spring Cloud Streams for the. And uh, I made this example with Redis. You can very well go ahead and use Kafka. So all you have to do is uh, in the pom.xml. Uh, so what I did is like I added this uh, spring integration redis you have to use spring integration kafka and add all the all the kafka different spring kafka dependencies here and when you do this uh, you'll be able to use kafka uh, in your uh, application and then pretty much the same uh, you know the implementation is needed for sending messages through kafka and receiving it with this we come to the end of this video thanks for watching guys and please subscribe for more such videos thank you